Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're at a local shop and they uh, called me in to look at this 2010 Cadillac SRX V6. They say it's running on only one bank of cylinders and there's a trouble code saying that these three coils in the front bank ignition coils are not receiving an ignition power source. I'm like, well, that's kind of a strange code. How does the computer know if the coils are receiving power or not? But anyways, um, it's only running on the rear bank. Uh, history is that the technician said that he found some rodent damage. One wire was chewed here by the fuse box and one wire was kind of exposed, so he fixed that up with a butt connector. Okay. Um, engine still runs only on the rear bank. So let's uh, scan it for codes, start it up, verify the customer complaint and see if we can figure this one out. Alright, on the Think Tool Pros I did a full code scan. A lot of red modules. In the ECM we have engine misfire detected, ignition coil 5 control circuit, ignition coil 6 control circuit, Ignition coil supply voltage circuit bank 2. So that's the code that they told me that was setting consistently. P135B. Um, indeed, the computer somehow knows that these ignition coils are not getting the correct voltage supply. Bank 2. So let's, um, let's clear all these out. So I'll turn the key on here. We'll say clear DTCs. Now, turning the ignition on with these stupid push button starts is sometimes not straightforward. Okay. I don't know if that's going to do it. <laughs> Please press brake to start engine. Let me see if that works. Then we'll um, go from there. All right, let me go right into PCM, read fault code. These four are still there. What if we hit clear? Yes. What the heck? Can't clear the codes? Clear fault code, yes. Possibly wrong vehicle. What the heck does that mean? All right, let me just start this thing up. See how it runs. Yes, <laughs> it's very shaky. Not happy at all. Let me see if I can clear the codes out. Read fault code. So bank two is ignition coils two, four, and six. Okay, I'm not sure why I can't clear these codes. Um, the technician told me he used a power probe to supply power to one of the ignition coil feeds, and then the engine ran perfectly. So Let's pull up a wiring diagram, verify that the front bank does not have any power going to these ignition coils, see what feeds it, and go from there. Okay, I'm in OBD2 mode, and I want to try to clear the codes here. What if I start the engine? Clear fault code. Okay, DTCs have been cleared. Read fault code. P135B and two permanent codes. Okay, let's chase this. Okay, let's do a little research before doing any testing. Remember, research is everything and you have to have a reliable source of information. I can't stress this enough. I could not do my job without a subscription 
like all data which I've used for almost 10 years now and I mean you can't fix cars without this stuff uh, if if you take your car to a shop and they don't subscribe to one of these services then take go somewhere else because they won't be able to fix it uh, unless it's you know like a burned out light bulb or something anyways P135B LF1 that's this uh, 3 liter V6 engine ignition coil supply voltage circuit bank 2 okay let's, uh, let's refresh that Maybe my hotspot isn't doesn't have the best reception here okay so short to ground open high resistance the ignition system on this engine uses individual coils yes for each cylinder it makes sense the engine control module monitors the ignition voltage from the fuse of each bank of coils to the ECM the ECM uses this information to determine if the misfires ignition coil voltage related so it specifically says that the power feed to these coils on each bank is monitored by the engine computer and if this voltage is less than two and a half volts it'll set this code so if we look up um, powertrain management so this is for um, bank two ignition coils so coils two four and six there's the fuse F10 UA fuse 20 amp fuse block under hood okay that's probably the first thing we're gonna check but how does the engine computer know what the voltage is on this distribution line? Well, here's where reading wiring diagrams and paying attention to details really pays off. So, you can see this J127, there's like a dotted line around it. And there's something else attached right here. They don't show it. So, I want to pull up the power distribution diagram for this fuse, F10UA. And that would be right here. So, you can see I have four windows open already and you don't want to close the windows because you're going to go back and reference them so fuse 10 UA indeed is that fuse right there and it feeds ignition coils 2, 4 and 6 and this one is LAU we don't have this LF1 that's us well look at that K20 engine control module so the ECM specifically monitors the voltage on this distribution line so that makes sense it looks like we don't have power to the ignition coils and the engine computer is reporting that correctly so let's go to fuse F10 UA 20 amp and see if it's hot on both sides with the ignition on now to turn the ignition on I guess you have to start the engine because this car is kind of dumb you can't just turn the ignition on unless I'm doing it wrong um, <laughs> so let's uh, let's find this fuse F10 UA 20 amp. All right, so we're at the fuse box, and fuse 10 it says injector even, and then 11 is injector odd. Well, looking for ignition coils, but you know I guess the label is a little misleading. Um, 10 and 11 are in this row. These two 20 amp fuses right there. So with the key on. We have nothing here because the ignition is not on. So we have to start the engine to do this check. That's ridiculous. But that's the way Cadillac does it, I guess. Come on, stay running. Okay, so test light definitely works. That's the battery positive post. So here here, 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 so 9, 10, 11, it all works, so the fuse is good, let's go right to the ignition coil. So I scanned it for codes one more time, and another code came up, 355, ignition coil E, primary control circuit open. That's number 5, so it, the, it's running on two cylinders, the whole front bank's disabled, and Apparently coil number five is also open, but that's a control circuit, not the power feed. Okay, very interesting. Um, let me save this in a report, and then 
We have to fix this power feed to the front coils first. All right, so here's my next test. We got the beauty cover off. The pink and black wire is the power feed to these ignition coils. So this is bank two. I got one back probe, or yes, I poked a hole in it. Um, and then I want to feed that wire five amps through a test light. This is a safe test from battery positive, okay? Now, if that wire is continuous all the way to the fuse box, and I suspect it's not, we're not gonna see any power on fuse 10, eight, nine, 10, right? That was our even bank? Yes. So I have two adapters in here instead of the fuse, and one of these should be hot if there is continuity. Obviously check that we're definitely sending power down here. Test light works. So this little test light will light up, the big one will not, um, if the circuit is continuous. So I'm measuring both pins here, no light, and this pin here, no light. But with this hooked up, the car should start and run on at least five cylinders. We still don't know what's going on with cylinder number five back there. That was setting an ignition coil fault. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's see if it at least runs on five cylinders right now. All right, here we go. Okay, much smoother. Yep, check engine lights blinking. It feels like a single cylinder misfire now. And a lot of blue smoke. Let's let it breathe a little bit. Holy mackerel, what a smoke show. <laughs> we're in a cloud, but I just wanna let, let this engine breathe a little bit. Um, so we're dealing with a broken wire somewhere between the fuse box and this J127 junction because none of the ignition coils are getting power and the computer's not getting power. So I'm suspecting that we're gonna go right for that repair spot See what's going on there. Was the pink and black wire compromised? Now, coil number five, um, we could just take it out, swap it with another coil, see if it's just a bad coil number five. Completely separate issue. Then we'll chase this broken wire. Well, I saw some smoke coming from under the hood. Is this a brand new catalytic converter? I really hope the parts cannon did not fire a converter for this problem. I really hope it did not. Well, I was just about to take coil number five out and what do you know it, it's unplugged. I don't know what they were doing or testing. Um, let's uh, start up, see if it runs on all six. All right, so I want to be 110% sure that we're dealing with a broken wire between the fuse box and the ignition coils. So I got the fuse box out. Um, it's just these three screws from this side, and they hold these big bulk connectors to the bottom of it. And then it's six clips around, and the whole thing pops out out of the way. So now I just want to, you know, feed the voltage through my test light to the power, and then see if it makes it back to the fuse box. So. Again, you have to do some research to know which pins to test. So right here it says X379 is the output of that fuse. And then to compare it, I want to compare it to the known good bank. This is bank, um, bank 1 from fuse 11. And that is X3 pin 81. Now, the pinouts of this fuse block, you want to look underneath, and what I found here was the only connector with more than 70 pins is X1, not X3. Um, they do have pinout values here, so pin 79 is pink and black ignition voltage, pin 81 is pink and black ignition voltage. So that matches up to here, except for it's X1 instead of X3. Again, there might be a mistake in the wiring diagrams. You have to use logic and verify with your equipment. So now I'm feeding through my test light battery positive voltage to a power wire on the rear bank. And pin 81, sure enough, is lighting up my test light. 
So if I disconnect the big test light, I'll just unplug it right here. See my little test light goes out. So bank one, we know, is continuous to this pin. So we know pin 79 is supposed to be the pin for, or the power to the front bank. So I'm gonna put my big test light back into here, feed voltage into this wire, and look, it actually lit up my test light dimly. Now, I was, again, off camera, I was doing a little quick visual inspection, and I saw this interesting spot right here where the harness is smashing up against the transmission oil pan. So, you know, what's the, um, what's the circuit here? So from this bulk connector, we go through that harness, not the one that they fixed the wire on, that's a separate connector. So it goes here, here, and there's this big kind of gaggle of splices and junctions. Then it comes up here, feeds the ignition coils, and then the, also the engine computer has to know, you know, has to measure that signal. So there's a splice somewhere right here, and it's rubbing up against this pan. And I see a little green crusty right there. Now, look. Oh, there it is. Let's see if we can restore it. I think we're just about done. I bet that wire is basically broken. It was right there. It's touching. See how dim that test light is? And if I pull it away from the harness, see wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You can't carry even 200 milliamps. So that wire is definitely broken right here. I'm going to take a picture of this, show this to the shop and ask them, do you want me to do the repair, or do they want to do that on their own? Okay, so customer, the shop approved me going into this harness and trying to find that broken wire and repairing it, and then we'll need to secure this harness away from the transmission oil pan. So again, GM is not Toyota, and sometimes, I mean, it does happen where like a bracket gets a little bent, and then the harness starts rubbing where it's not supposed to, so we'll make sure it doesn't rub again. Let's uh, open this up. Ah, the sweet smell of victory. This is going to be a little tough to show on the camera, but this is our pink and black wire, and I assume it has one strand attaching it. It's the crusty one. <laughs> and then that should go up to here. We can peel this back a little more. Again, the Harbor Freight pick for the win. It's probably going to be this one right here. Boom. So, we have plenty of length to shorten and repair it. There's the other end that was rubbing on the transmission. Now you want to make sure there are no other wires that are going to suffer the same fate. And it looks like that one took the brunt of the rubbing. So, all the other wires look intact. I'm going to do a quick, careful visual inspection there. Just soldered up this one wire and this car will be fixed. Alright, ready to solder this broken wire. Get it all cleaned up. Shrink wrap. And we're going to tape up this harness and get it away from that transmission pan. So, TS100 soldering iron. Best thing since sliced bread. No butt connectors required here, people. Just a good soldering iron. And you can see this is again a tight spot where there's no way you can get a crimping tool down here. So I got a soldering iron and some solder and trying to get this in the shot. this up nice oh yeah you can see it flowing right through those strands I'm gonna finish that up and clear all the codes make sure this car is good to go 
So here's a quick tip for electrical tape. If you get down to a really small roll, don't throw that away. Put that in your toolbox for tight situations like this. It'll wrap everything up nice. And good to go. All right, so quick verification of repair. I did move the harness about half an inch away from the transmission, just lifted it up in this clamp, secured it, bent this clamp out of the way, secured it, so no way that's gonna rub on the transmission anymore. Test light, big test light's connected to that power, and boom, nice, bright test light as expected, so let's put everything back together, clear out the codes, perfect. All right, here we go, start up. Mmm, perfection. I'm just gonna go in and see if we uh, just rescan it, fuse boxes unplugged, and you know, um, clear out any existing codes. And uh, Scott should be back on the road. Now, I did talk to the shop owner here and he, um, he said this car came in with a brand new cat, brand new VVT solenoids, brand new this, brand new that. So the owner apparently was, has been trying to get it fixed for a while if you replace a cat while the computer's telling you you have a circuit code for the front bank of ignition coils, what are you doing? <laughs> so, good thing they, um, you know, they tried their best and then they found a broken wire, fixed that, and then they called me up before firing any other parts of this Cadillac. So, uh, yeah, we can blame the car for this one. Poor harness routing. Uh, now that's fixed, hopefully for good. And... This car should have a lot of miles left in it. So, appreciate everyone watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Alright, a little bonus footage. And this is why you always verify the repair and always do a post-repair scan. There might be something else wrong with this car. Once you fix the big problem, there might be other problems. So, we have a few codes. Most of them I expect to be, you know, voltage codes, circuit codes, whatever. Um, ECM is saying intake cam position actuator solenoid valve control circuit bank one current code. What the heck? I'm gonna try do a full code clear. And you know, shut the vehicle off, start it back up, and then See if that code comes back. So it's a circuit code, intake position actuator, solenoid. So we only saw one broken wire. Now, the you know, vehicle's obviously been messed with. There could be another wiring problem somewhere else. And it only ran that check once all the cylinders were back online, you know, the ignition coils. So we have a green tree right now. Let's back out, clear the results, shut, shut the vehicle off. Go to sleep. The, the triple beep just gets me every time. I mean, the key's right here. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, is it gonna set the P0010 trouble code? So it's probably a two trip code, so the check engine light wouldn't come on right away. Let's just scan the ECM. No DTCs, okay. I would take this thing on a test drive just to be 100% that it's running fine. Um, then we can call it fixed. All right, we're in the Cadillac. I don't know, is it a little sluggish? Still see a little blue smoke coming out the back. <laughs> we'll take it around the block. See if it says any codes. Yep, sure enough, we have a P0010 intake cam position actuator solenoid valve control circuit. And we're still making some blue smoke. Like in this acceleration, I'll uh, turn the camera backwards. Once the light turns green. This car's issues. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. That 
that's not good. Oh, geez, smoke screen. <laughs> well, uh, we'll go back to the shop and see what they want to do with this thing. It seems to be getting worse and worse. Like, I can't see out the rear window. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Look in the mirror. Uh, so a quick follow-up on that 2010 Cadillac SRX. Man, what a disaster that car was. So I got back to the shop after that test drive, you know, blowing clouds of blue smoke. Um, talked to the shop owner. We actually called the customer up. So the customer drove this car on three cylinders 10 miles to get to the shop. And apparently... GM doesn't disable fuel injectors when there's a misfire and ignition coil problem or something. So this thing was dumping gas to the front bank and not burning it. That explains, I, I mean, it must have been flooded with gas, like the, the front cat, which was already looked like it was replaced. Um, not a good situation. And so we actually called up the customer and, you know, I said, you know, I'm two hours into this thing. It runs on all six cylinders now. It's setting this, uh, you know, cam actuator code. Do you want me to keep going? Um, this older Asian guy, he's like, no, 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 it's fine. Just leave it. I'm like, so we were, both me and the shop owner were kind of relieved. We're like, get this thing out of here. <laughs> we don't ever want to see it again. Um, but, you know, it was a fun car. Uh, definitely uh, some neat testing there. And at least, at least got it running. So... Uh, that's it for this one, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.